Yeah, hello. My name is Luke McBain. I'm here with my brother Chad McBain, and we are two brothers and Bitcoin, where we chat about Bitcoin mainly and topics related to Bitcoin. Hi, Chad. Good Hi, how are you? Me. Good, great. Um, as you mentioned also in our last recording, this is not financial advice, so we're just having a chat. This is uh, yeah. only educational and yeah. um, everybody should do their own financial research and uh, that's that's what yeah. we're, we're not doing financial advice so that's, that's no this is this is edutainment edutainment yes. right so we yes. hope to do some edutainment um you sent me some articles i sent you some articles about current events and one of the articles i sent your well I just noticed something happening um is Donald Trump and Donald Trump is always a <laughs> hot topic and uh so let's have a look what's going on with this guy he says Donald Trump says he'll take Bitcoin Ether Dogecoin and other cryptocurrencies for campaign donations so um why is this a thing like why okay now people could say okay well he's uh he's crazy i don't know crazy or whatever and he's now taking crypto and all that but why is this a thing why is this news why should this um be interesting so, for us i think um obviously you're in germany i'm in canada so we we don't get a vote in the u.s election so whatever i'm about to say uh i have no opinion one way or another really as to as to what, what happens politically in the US. However, um, Donald Trump and his administration uh, from 2016 to 2020 was not particularly uh, in favor of Bitcoin or crypto. Um, and they, they did a few things to actually hinder its progress, uh, in my opinion. But uh, something interesting, in my uh, opinion, happened during the... Uh, I guess the primaries for the uh, Republican primaries last fall. And one of the leading candidates was a gentleman named Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, and he's a self-made, uh, I don't know if he's a billionaire or not, but he's done very well. Um, and younger gentleman, I think he just turned 40 recently, uh, family. And he is a, a tech, a tech bro, if you will. And he's a, uh, a big believer in the fundamentals of Bitcoin. Um, and he also, I think, is much more in tune with, you know, that millennial crowd and, and the Gen Z crowd and, and obviously some Gen Xers as well. Uh, and how they see Bitcoin and, and crypto at large. And Trump won the nomination, obviously, but Vivek was somebody that did very well. And I'm not sure what his role is, but clear to most people that he has um, an insider's voice in the Trump camp um, and is advising him on certain issues. And one of the things that's rumored that he's advising him on is things like Bitcoin and, and crypto. Um, and so recently uh, there was a rally, I don't know where it was, uh, you can probably find it on YouTube, uh, Trump and Bitcoin or something like that. but. Um, he was asked a question uh, by somebody in the crowd about um, his stance on Bitcoin and if Americans could own it, because the Biden administration, at least up until very recently, has been openly hostile towards Bitcoin and crypto. And Trump's response was basically, look, um, he was a big believer in the U.S. dollar, but he thought that owning Bitcoin uh, as a as a store of value was fine. And if Americans wanted to own Bitcoin and some cryptos, it was fine with him. And that uh, if you want to own these things, you better vote for him because uh, the, the Biden camp was, was definitely anti-Bitcoin and anti-crypto. Uh, so I think this is where this all started. Um, and it was just interesting after he said that, I was gonna say he said that maybe uh, early May, so maybe three weeks ago. Um, it's become very clear uh, in the polls that he got a bit of a bump. Now, look, I think there's something like 80 million Americans hold crypto, about 40 million hold um, Bitcoin. Now that could be as little as five bucks. So I, I don't I don't know that it, what it says. But even if we take if we take one percent of that, 
let's say 800,000 Americans uh, that have a real strong opinion on their rights uh, to hold crypto and to invest in crypto without too much government overreach. Some regulation, yes, but not overreach. If that's the case, and we're only taking 1% of the amount of Americans that hold crypto and Bitcoin, 800,000 votes not going towards one candidate could be huge. The last two elections, uh, and my numbers might be off slightly, but I believe the 2016 and the 2020 election in the U.S. were decided by less than 200,000 votes. So if you can swing several hundred thousand votes over to you, um, that's a massive thing. Because I don't think anybody would get a vote by saying, oh, I'm against crypto, vote for me. I, I don't think enough people care. But there's enough people that have crypto that would vote for you if you say, I am in favor of crypto. So I think it's a one-sided vote. If you're in favor of crypto, I think you pick up votes. If you're against crypto, I don't think you you gain any votes. You might not lose any, but you don't gain any. So I think what's happened uh, just in the last week or so, I'm smiling because I, I find it humorous, is after he said that, the polls started to shift, and about two weeks afterwards, when the, they did the polls, it was clear that he got a bump of maybe a million people. Now, that who knows how they'll vote in November, but as of right now, it helped him in the polls, and he now has a clear lead over Biden. I'm not saying it was all about crypto. I'm just saying that that probably helped. And just in the last few days, we've seen uh, some... I don't know, signals, I guess, from the Democratic Party, both in the uh, House of Representatives and in the Senate, that suggests that some of the Democrats are concerned and are now coming out saying they're okay if Americans own crypto too. And that was not something any Democrat had really said, with the exception of one or two Democrats. That's not something that Democrats, by and large, seemed okay with up until very recently. And I'm not saying it's the whole party, but it certainly has more and more Democrats seeming to vote for crypto favorable legislation than ever. So I think whether you like Trump or hate Trump, irrelevant, but if you're owning Bitcoin or interested in owning Bitcoin or you're interested in, in uh, the crypto industry, uh, I think he helped the industry uh, in the last few weeks just by stating that he was okay with it. And if he got in that, uh, that he would allow Americans to invest in it. So that uh, that seems to have really uh, stung, a, or sorry, uh, stirred up a bit of a hornet's nest in the, in the US. And now we're seeing a lot of people who've been pretty quiet on both sides of the aisle come out and say, yeah, they're in favor of, of crypto too, so. Very um, interesting. Like yeah. now, I, now I understand this, uh, why you felt that this is really an interesting piece of news, because according to your analysis, you, you're, you're saying, maybe I just sub summarize it again, that so many people in the United States are already owning Bitcoin, that for for them, it might just mean, well, you know, what are my politicians doing? Like this right. is something yeah. which concerns me. It might not, you know, be, be the main reason why I vote a political party or candidate, but if somebody is favorable to what I'm invested in, uh, that'll help me make my make up my mind. So it's, yeah. it's something which could swing somebody's vote. At least those people wouldn't probably would be less likely to vote for a candidate who's openly hostile to Bitcoin. Right. And that makes exactly. a lot of sense. Like, why would you do yeah. that? I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I, I think I, that's why I use the 1%. If, if 40 million Americans own Bitcoin, it's probably a reasonable assumption that 1% of them might just be a one issue voter, you know, kind of like sometimes people vote only on somebody's economic policy, right? But they don't care about their social policies or anything. Like so I don't think it's 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 crazy to suggest one percent, which would still be four hundred thousand Americans. And as I said, the last two elections were were uh, were won or lost on less than two hundred thousand votes. So I think it is important from a political standpoint. But because I don't have a vote, like quite frankly, I just hope for the best for all of us. Uh, to me, it doesn't really matter that much, other than the fact that it did happen. And therefore, as somebody that does believe wholeheartedly in Bitcoin and sound money for everybody in the world, I think this is an important thing, even if we want to don't want to get involved in the politics of it. The fact that it is happening, I think, is, is really beneficial to Bitcoin and the growth of sound money throughout the world. Yeah, it's, it's also quite amazing that uh, how Bitcoin and the proliferation of Bitcoin can change uh, politics. 
and not the right. other way around anymore, which is again, <laughs> which again is to the point that Bitcoin is changing, changing the world. And uh, I think you said that in our last conversation. Uh, well, that's just how what's going to happen. Like Bitcoin right. is going to change uh, people's minds, and uh, it's it's a technology which changes societies basically. Yes. And uh, and uh, we need to sort of like adapt to it or try to work start to work with it because it's now it's going to be everywhere in the future and if a lot of 30 million americans are holding bitcoin i didn't even know that so that's uh, that's an astounding number yeah yeah and again it, i mean many of them might hold small amounts you know they might have five dollars on a Robinhood account or something but the fact is is 80 million americans hold bitcoin approximately yeah or sorry hold crypto and about 40 million hold bitcoin yeah, actually, I think it's 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 close to 50 million, but let's just stick with 40 million that hold Bitcoin alone. So I, I look at Bitcoin. This has been said for years by people much smarter than I am, that you don't change Bitcoin. Bitcoin changes you. And the way I look at it is in 1995, a friend of mine told me to try out the Internet. You know, and I was like, oh, you know, and in 1997, I started looking at houses online, you know. And fast forward, you know, 25, 27 years later, here we are. Um, governments didn't change the internet. Many governments were afraid of the internet. Many governments wanted to suppress the internet. They still do in some parts of the world. But the internet was just going to do its thing. It's code. It's technology. Uh, and that's how I view Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin's just going to keep doing its thing. And we will adapt to Bitcoin or the same way that we adapted to the internet, you know, so. Yeah, amazing. I think it's a great analogy. Uh, yeah, and internet and smartphones have changed us. Yeah, and if, yeah. we, if we're really honest, they're ch they've changed human behavior and how we communicate, work, and do everything. And that's it's not even a very original thought. But um, yeah, to apply the same to Bitcoin probably is still an alien thought for many people. But uh, it's happening. It's it's absolutely happening. Yeah, and Bitcoin today might be me in 1997 using the internet. Like it's it's still really early. So you know, 15 years from now, we might be sitting down and saying, "Well, of course we use Bitcoin." You know, like because, and actually, just a a, a fun little note: the adoption of Bitcoin is actually happening faster than the adoption of the internet globally. So yeah. Yeah, and, so it's, that's it's, and it's happening globally. Like uh, I just was in Jordan, Amman a couple of weeks back and talked about Bitcoin to some colleagues over there, uh, Jordanian colleagues. And they were like, oh, okay. yeah, we know, we know about Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. And crypto. Like it's yeah. like, a, you, can, you yeah. can go everywhere in the world. People know about it. So it's already, yeah. as you say, it's a global phenomenon, yeah. but the, about the adoption, I have another uh, article, which I brought and I thought, wow, that's, uh, that's almost shocked me. Uh, it says here, Wisconsin becomes the first state to buy Bitcoin. And um, yeah, when I read that, I, I, I got a shock because, uh, yeah. again, the surprise of those uh, Bitcoin profits who says, well, first it's individuals, then it's companies, um, then it's investors, then it's, uh, you know, they, they say there's like this um, yeah. snowball effect, right? And at the end, it's going to be states. And I remember telling this like to a friend of mine a, a year ago to say, you know, states are going to buy Bitcoin one day. And he said, that's nah, not going to happen. Like, what if they have their own currency and, and all that? And granted, this is not the United States of America, but it is a, it's, it's a federal state. It's Wisconsin and becomes the first state to buy Bitcoin. So now governments are starting to buy officially Bitcoin. And I was just blown away by that implication. So they're, uh, yeah, they're buying the ETFs, which just recently have been approved. Yeah. That's just, I, can you say something about that? Is that <laughs> yeah, I just sure. like, am I just well, I... hyperventilating now or what's going on? <laughs> I, well, I, I think your point is 100% correct. Like it starts with the individual and then it moves up and it keeps moving up and up and up the, the so-called uh, hierarchy, if you will. So uh, just before I comment on this, I would say that I'm a little surprised that Wisconsin's the first state to buy Bitcoin. I actually don't truly believe the article. And this is what I mean when I say this. Wyoming instituted um, uh, state bitcoin banking 
five years ago in 2019. Okay. Uh, Texas has been the state itself, not just have they allowed Bitcoin mining to happen, but they themselves apparently are, are mining Bitcoin. You know, Florida uh, considers itself the Bitcoin capital of the United States, or at least Miami does anyway. Um, so maybe this has been going on much longer than we think, but what I think this is alluding to though is, uh, sorry, this was Wisconsin. I think, and I haven't read the article, but I think now what's happening is states are, because of the ETFs, they can now legally um, invest in Bitcoin through the ETFs for their state pension funds. Now, I haven't read the article. So, right. yeah, that's that's yeah. exactly what's happening. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so now I think you're going to see this really start to snowball because I just named three other states that have already been embracing Bitcoin and crypto for many years. Uh, it would make sense that those states also would like to invest in uh, from a state pension perspective as well. So we'll probably see more states follow fairly quickly. And I wouldn't be surprised if Wyoming, Florida, and Texas, right off the top of my head, uh, were, weren't far behind. Uh, I, think, I think in the next couple of years, you'll see dozens of states do this. Yeah. Yeah. I... Um, there's something, Bitcoiners have been talking about this for a number of years, but the U.S. government, through uh, search and seizure of people that were doing, um, at least in their minds, illegal things, and were convicted of those things, has confiscated over 200,000 Bitcoin over the last, let's say, 12 years. The U.S. government has not sold much of it. I find that interesting. <laughs> you know? If if you uh, if you confiscated a truck of of, uh, of liquor from uh, somebody who was transporting liquor illegally, after the legal proceedings, you'd probably sell the liquor into the open market. You know, um, so I find that interesting. So the fact that a state pension is now investing in Bitcoin, I think, is the tip of the iceberg. I, I think you're going to see this uh, happen more and more, and I think it will happen fairly soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's and, that's the start of the of the of the floodgates, basically yeah, the the state yeah. money pouring into this uh, this asset. Yeah, and you know, so the people that are investors in Bitcoin, if you will, this is what keeps them up at night. You know, uh, hyperventilating because they see the snowball effect of this. And anybody that invested in Bitcoin in the last 10 years, and in my opinion, anybody that, that holds Bitcoin over the next five to 10 years is going to do very well uh, in terms of investment. But um, I think, I guess that keeps them excited. But it also, I think that Bitcoin 10 years from now will be so much more than just an investment. I think it'll be a store of value. I think it could be a, a way to trade with people. So. We'll see what happens, but I, I think this is really interesting. It's the tip of the iceberg, in my opinion. And if I was uh, a state employee, I would be happy to see that because there's very few things in the, in the last decade that you could invest in that actually go up in value um, over and above inflation. Um, right. So this is this is a big thing, I think, for a lot of people. So it makes a lot of sense for a state pension fund to do that. Yeah. yeah, you know, there's, a, I don't know who said it first, it doesn't matter. It's a common, uh, common saying is, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't listen to what they tell you, watch what they do. You know, so we've, we've, we've heard, you know, JP Morgan, uh, so called uh, governments around the world, uh, unelected uh uh, leaders uh, in the web, all these people criticizing uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And yet we're starting to find out more and more of them are, are invested in it or are investing in it. So uh, if I was the average person, I would take note of what they do, not what they say. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I just found another factoid in this article, which sort of like underscores your point, um, <laughs> which was this, that uh, in 2021 not so long ago but it seems like you know <laughs> like almost yeah, decades ago forever uh, when el salvador made bitcoin its official uh, uh, currency 
um, that we saw a lot of articles and people, uh, politicians, and I don't know what investment experts uh, ridiculing uh, El Salvador and says this is a disaster for the country. Uh, how can uh, how dare they do that? And uh, that's just uh, stupid. And um, that seems to be now a long time ago, and uh, probably everybody everybody forgot what they said back then. So, and now we see Wisconsin even in, investing well, in that. Yeah, I, I think they still call him. Uh, well, they don't call him stupid, but they certainly uh, tell, say that he uh, shouldn't be doing what he's doing uh, in El Salvador. Um, but at the end of the day, they're making their bond payments, which is more than can be said for many uh, Latin American countries, and. Um, over the long haul, they are up considerably in terms of their investment, which is only helping the state itself or the country itself. You know, so if if he hadn't have bought Bitcoin with uh, with with uh, the money that they used, um, the money that they had in 2021 would be worth probably 25 percent less than it is today. Instead, he invested in something that goes up in value, so it's more than doubled his original investment so far. So, yeah, and it's actually, I was also astonished by this number. It actually, it seems fairly low to me after we talked about how much Bitcoins now are in these ETFs. Uh, here, El Salvador holds 5,748 Bitcoin. Uh, compare that to the what? 840,000? 50,000 yeah. 50, Bitcoin, which are now in these 11 ETFs. It seems like nothing, like that's yeah. just like compared. And I mean, so uh, that's also I don't know. I, I that's all. Yeah. I just noticed it, it is a small number, but it, it's a it's a country that has a smaller population. Uh, it's a it's a country that financially has been struggling for a very long time. And no part in part, no thanks to the IMF and the the World Bank. Uh, but I won't get into that too much. But anyway. The, the fact that they hold almost 6,000 Bitcoin in the last three years is fantastic. I'd like to see what that 6,000 Bitcoin is worth in, in, uh, in five or 10 more years. I, I think, I think also, I don't, I don't know much about his politics or anything like that, but that to me was a great decision. I don't think it's a coincidence that he is a young president, uh, that sees the world as a digital technical place. Um, so I, I think he he made a good decision for his people, at least in that particular uh, instance. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 not a lot of countries followed suit. Uh, I think only the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, if I'm correct. Yeah, I think they did, and there's uh, oh, sorry, I think it was the Central African Republic or something. Oh, oh sorry, yeah, Central yeah. African Republic, not DRC. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't even know if they're still doing that. But to your point, to the article. I think we're about to see a lot of countries uh, start to do it, but I have a funny feeling there's been a few countries that have been doing it for a while that just didn't disclose it. You know, if if you're if you're a Middle Eastern country, I don't know what you have to gain by disclosing it. You know, if you're Russia or China, I don't know what you have to gain by disclosing that. Whereas El Salvador, literally on the global stage, from a political standpoint or a geopolitical standpoint, nobody cares. So. I think it was a way for him to try and show his people that they're trying to do something to lift them out of, quite frankly, the situation they've been in for many decades. And also, I think it was a way for him to, um, how can I say this politely, extend uh, uh, an appendage or, uh, to the uh, to the IMF and to uh, and to the World Bank uh, over time. You know, interesting thing in El Salvador, just quickly is. And again, I don't know much about the technical aspects of this, but they apparently have now started mining Bitcoin using the uh, off gases from the volcanoes that are in El Salvador. So it's environmentally uh, friendly um, because they they use uh, the volcano uh, energy for electricity. And then, of course, as anybody knows, we lose a lot of electricity in the transfer um from its source to the actual communities that use it and so apparently the mining is is taking some of the electricity that they that they were losing so they're actually something that was just evaporating into thin air they're now basically turning into an investment into the country so just really interesting stuff being done there well i think we're done for today i think that was again a very interesting talk and uh, we'll have to look into this whole question i was just thinking 
one day we'll have to look into this whole question of energy and uh, discuss that again. Uh, we yeah. as you just said, you know, what term and what sense does uh, Bitcoin actually also change um, the way we uh, produce energy? Uh, yeah, know, as you said, yeah. energy, Bitcoin changes us and it'll also change the way we produce uh, energy. And uh, anyway, one day yeah. we'll have to get into that with, uh, yeah, with some interesting sure. articles because I think that's also something a lot of people don't know. No, um, yeah. Yeah, it, most people think it's it's bad for the environment. It's actually fantastic. Yeah, but we'll get into that another time. Yeah. Right. So, th thanks a lot for your time and your insights. Uh, it was pretty pretty exciting news, and uh, I hope I'll see you soon. Sounds good. Same here. Okay. Take care. You too.